Hello, divine, beautiful soul. This is Energy Speaks Podcast with your host, Katriel. This season, we are embarking on the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series. And we are now at Aries. And for Aries, we're all about taking inspired action. And also navigating the many different personalities of, of the Aries energy, which we will be really discussing today. Um, we have a very special guest here. He is our practitioner for Aries online class. His name is Julio Zavala. He is a steel mace flow coach. And I'm just so grateful to have you here, bro. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. And, uh, you know, thank, thank you most importantly for allowing me to be part. Um, this is, a uh, you know, everything you're doing is, it's, uh, really unique. So happy to be part of it. With honor and pleasure. <laughs> so I want to, I want to get to know you more. Honestly, I don't know a ton about you. So this is kind of cool yeah. as I'm finding more about, more about you our audiences as well <laughs> yeah right on right on yeah i mean that was a that was an awesome connect uh gary uh connected us who uh was also part of the series as well um that was a uh, leo uh, yep yeah yep, that was that was a fun one uh, uh she's she's awesome person uh yeah. but yeah yeah she she recommended me to yeah we connect and we talked a little bit and found out so that we were able to find some things that aligned uh, uh with uh with what we're doing right now so amazing it's amazing mm -hmm. so how yeah. how did you get on this path of like well one spirituality and two how does that connect with steel mace flow oh man really, <laughs> i know really right <laughs> Oh, right into it man that's, scorpio that's awesome. man uh, zoom <laughs> 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 for anyone that uh you know for any of my the people that i know in the steel mace flow community i mean uh they understand like the you know the gravity of that of that question and uh you know just not even necessarily spirituality but it's just that that inner battle right um you know well, personally i got uh it's just still mace flow it was one of the things i got into during the pandemic um you know, there's obviously everything was shut down and I was looking for things that um, allowed me to stay home and, you know, be able to move, you know, I could go to a gym and uh, you know, luckily, you know, there were parks and stuff around here uh, that were open. So I was able to, to really dive into, you know, a lot of cycling and things like that. Um, hmm. But hmm. Uh, yeah, I was looking for something that uh, some sort of a resistance thing that I could do at home, you know, so I could only really think of, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to build this whole like setup of like dumbbells and stuff and get all this equipment in here. And, uh, you know, that was, that was part of what turned me, turned me away from it in the past. Right. And yeah. didn't want to clutter an area that I had and, uh, things of that nature. Um, so, you know, I remember I was listening to uh, I started listening to Aubrey Marcus during that time and uh, his podcasts and, you know, the stuff that he was getting into. And yeah, yeah, I know. Totally. One, <laughs> one of those guys. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I watched uh, something is pretty by him. Uh, he's pretty deep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's I mean, he's just, you know, you just going out and having these conversations that I think helps expand uh, different ways of thinking. Right. Uh, yeah. particularly in, uh, in things that a lot of people shy away from talking about, quite frankly. But yeah. I, <laughs> I digress. Uh, <It's> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, through that, he owned a company called Onnit. And uh, you know, I was interested in what this company was because I remember seeing Onnit back in the Facebook, you know, when I had Facebook, early in the Facebook days when uh, it was just one of those companies that were, you didn't know it was a scam or not, you know. Uh so I remember seeing the, I remember seeing on it in places. So I looked it up and I was like, okay, kettlebells. I know what kettlebells are. And they had uh, Indian clubs as well. And then they had these things called a steel mace. And I was like, what is that? Um, <laughs> you know, that, you know, I, was, 
it it, it honestly it, uh, it 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 blew my mind. And when I started looking into different workouts, and a lot of them were a little bit more tied into conventional ways of working out, and uh, you know reps and uh, you know very technical based and a lot of swinging, uh, you know, three sixty swings, things of that nature. Uh, but then I stumbled upon uh steel mace flow and uh i knew in, almost immediately i was like okay that's that's what i want to be doing in my little space here in my backyard you know um you know i could you know i looked up different things about it people talking about it you know because in my mind i was like okay you know you got to go heavy you know that's the, that's the that's the conventional way of thinking right like especially mm-hmm. you know, as a man you know missing the gym and you know you got to go heavy and uh you know i was just listening to people and people i was following on on social at the time and uh uh they're saying 10 pounds was enough you know i remember distinctly uh hearing that and so i was like all right i'll try it out the 10 it was only like 40 40 something 40 something bucks at the time uh i got it and started playing with it and i was like okay this doesn't necessarily feel like 10 pounds right now but you know i also didn't know what i was doing either right um right. so i got <laughs> different modalities and uh you know just copying people online things like that obviously at the time you know uh many of us were still working from home you know my wife was still working from home i was starting to get back into the swing of going there physically but the amount of time there was much shorter right so uh everyone had a uh, had a lot of time uh during those days uh early or late especially mid to late 2000 uh 20 right uh um so i just i leaned in i leaned into the steel may stuff uh you know i knew for me it was something that I, I knew i wanted to i needed to get back into my life you know and and i felt like the time that was spent quite frankly you know here at home you know i i, I decided to take advantage of it uh it really really work on myself you know i was uh my 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 wife was pregnant with my firstborn son uh through much of the uh the lockdown pandemic and uh you know so my mind was fully prepared like to take on that responsibility you know so it, yeah. it was in order for me to be the best father for uh for my son and you know the best possible partner uh for my wife best possible person i got to work on myself and i really committed to doing that that year uh and, and thankfully it's it's sustained uh quite a bit so um but initially at the time I, what i was also dealing with was uh the loss of my mother mm. so we, uh Sorry. we lost her in january 2019 oh thank you brother uh lost her in january 2019 um and it had been a year uh at this time you know we were just starting to hear you know like this virus is in china you know it's spreading we didn't think much of it right uh but the uh that extra time definitely allowed us to to find what what worked for us you know both with a diet food uh and for me it was physical activity um uh, and when i found out that you know using this thing in the history of of the steel mace uh it it opened up this whole new meeting you know it wasn't just going into a gym where i was mindlessly like trying to find things to do right or you know or have to make a plan plan out the entire thing um you know, it, 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 it also allowed me to start journaling and, you know, it, within flow for those that understand any sort of flow, uh, or take part in ecstatic dance, right. That is also flow, you know, things through movement, uh, stir you and then they move you, um, you know, and for this, and for, for that space to be opened up, to be able to, uh, come up with some of these, some of these flows, uh, but also attach that healing element to it, you know, and attach meaning to the movements and the sequences and the patterns and exploring new patterns, exploring patterns that uh, start one way and then 
you know, there's 10, a hundred different ways to exit it. Right. And, um, you know, you just keep going down the rabbit hole, uh, with any sort of, flow, uh, aspects, you know, and, and for me, I was able to find flow through, uh, through a steel mace and, um, uh, but it also allowed me to really focus on on that healing aspect uh, with the loss of my mother. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I was able to move physically through it and, you know, also move out energies, you know. So uh, that's what that's what makes it so much fun for me now, you know, and, and, and still because it may not be necessarily about, you know, centered around, uh, you know, that you know my mother and, and uh healing from that loss but just what i'm doing throughout the day you know if i had a <laughs> if i had a rough day at work uh you know sometimes i'll uh, that's the other thing about it too you can take it literally anywhere it's like a full gym that you can take <laughs> absolutely anywhere you know i keep one in my car and most mace enthusi enthusiasts are gonna definitely be keeping uh maces uh tucked away in in very random places so um you know so it's a uh, you know and, and and that's also so appealing is you know you literally get to take take it wherever you want that's awesome so like well first of all do you have a mace with you right now i do i do i do you go. I would love for you to to share. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So this is a steel mace, and um, this is a ten pound. It is an offset tool that the weight is on one side, uh, and then the, there's a relatively long handle uh, that allows you to wield it. Uh, now this is based off of uh, something called a agata. Uh, that was used in ancient Persian times uh, uh, as a weapon it, or, you know, Hindus used to use it, but, um, you know, it was a bamboo stick essentially with a stone tied on top of it. It was, it was used to, for battering uh, in war. So, uh, you know, so, so oftentimes, you know, you find yourself in, in some of these positions where, you know, it feels like you're, you're you're taking a swing at something um but you know it's a, a but a, it a, it really promotes stability it promotes um you know obviously it's resistance training as well um but it's a, it's really whatever you want it to be you know if it's uh you know this this thing uh is literally a fully fun it's it's more tied into like a functional fitness where um you know it's centered a little bit more, more toward Ability, movement and, and things like that you know for me personally uh my goal is you know i want to be able to run around with my grandkids one day you know i want to be able to you know throw that baseball and you know i want to be able to uh uh you know be mobile at that time of my life you know so i want to uh you know i feel i believe this practice and uh you know different forms of it you know it doesn't even necessarily need to be this right i mean anything uh movement in general so um i love that i'm able to express myself through this modality of movement i'm curious um like is this considered a a spiritual art um and how did it get from a a weapon that was used in you know ancient persia and went to spirituality yeah yeah i mean uh you know anything i think i believe i truly believe anything can be spiritual right like i mean i grew up uh i grew up in uh you know catholic household and um you know and, and with the catholic schools and things like that right like uh you know i always i always believed that i don't necessarily need to go to a physical place to to worship god right like sometimes i was i found myself in nature 
you know, feeling, feeling like that was like a true, like, you know, I feel like you can also, you know, praise God in nature as well. Right. Like, um, Absolutely. you know, and, you know, you could dig into the history of, of the mace, uh, or the, the Gada, um, yeah. you know, uh, Hanuman has a Gada, you know, uh, in, in almost every single Hanuman is the, the Hindu God, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, the the monkey gun, and uh, okay, and almost every single in almost every single uh, uh, depiction of him, he has this this big golden uh, gada, and uh, you know, was it, it it's, considered it's a fun... spiritual then? I mean, I think I I think I. I think there's a lot of spiritual uh, deities that have weapons, right? Uh, or of some sort, you know, or, or you know, be going to, you know, the Bible even, you know, they talk about the the armor of God, and you know, the things that, uh, you know, relating to a weapon, right? Um, yeah. You know, at that time, that might have been the the main hand to hand combat on the field weapon that they were using, right? Swords yeah. obviously came around point um you know arrows and all that all that other stuff so what used to be a a a tool or a weapon on an actual battlefield you know within this practice allows us to take that battle with from within you know that battle that we all go through within and yeah um anyone i believe that has ever been through any sort of a, a spiritual um awakening or an awareness of that side to them you know when they're starting to uh, really find find that thing that calls them um you know that you're it usually proceed is is preceded by something that might have been a little dark i believe they call uh the dark night of the soul right where where you know things are things seem off the rails lost even right and, um you know so uh, i think i think it's a good symbol you know to be able to handle a lot of those things that are happening internally you know for, especially yeah. for those that are uh not afraid to face it and you know there are times where i'm in this practice and you know there's there are movements where i just i feel powerful i feel uh like a warrior you know, and there's there's moments where uh, I'm able to feel a little bit more into emotion. Also, you know, go a little bit slower. Uh, you know, get on the ground. You know, get some body weight stuff uh, within a single flow. And uh, um, no matter which way you choose to to utilize a steel mace, you know, it could be through the flow art of of steel mace flow, or it could be. Um, you know, primarily with, you know, just regular swings, um, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, they, they call it runners even, right? Like if you're a runner, you're familiar with the runner's high, right? Where it's like that feeling of just intense euphoria because you're, you know, your body's releasing and moving so much energy, right? Um, yeah. And to be able to, you know, running is like you're running, right? You're really just with your thoughts, uh you know, especially if you don't have, you know, something in your ears, which most people do, which is, you know, something I do for sure. Uh, you know, music's a, a massive part of the experience uh, of working out in general, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so what I like to, how I like to describe it uh, is, you know, I don't, rather than working out, I, I love the concept of working in uh where we're taking uh external movement and internal movement and trying to meet it uh right in the middle um you know and from a spiritual from a spiritual perspective um you know i believe you know that's that's something that is a connection to the divine you know no matter the the belief uh structure or, or um you know, whatever, no matter what the religion, uh, I, I believe that through the bodies, these bodies that we have, uh, these this mind that we have, the experiences that we've had, 
uh, that have led up to this point. Um, you know, through movement, you're really able to to bring a lot of those things out, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 I believe, I believe any everyone I've ever met that's ever uh been so disciplined to uh any sort of uh any sort of structure or um you know ways of being there's there's so many different methods but you know if it works for them it's it's that's great you know if you're able to find grace through that that's fantastic um you know there's there's moments where with steel mace flow i absolutely find that's a state of grace uh i've been able to flow <clears throat> man one night i was in tulum uh, uh with my buddy i went to go visit him in tulum uh and not even the nighttime right like uh, during the day the whole day was insane but i went to go visit him and not in tulum but reply to carmen first then we traveled to tulum for a night and it was just a weird thing where my worlds converged uh you know i've been playing tennis my entire life and you know, i'm a tennis coach now also uh but my tennis coach lived in tulum so we got to stay at his place you know got to catch up like this is my tennis coach from uh, prime time like traumatic teenage years part of my life right like this coach like he was like the he was the guy that held it down for me at that time you know like that real like someone i looked up to you know um mm -hmm. and uh He gave us a space to be able to, you know, sleep for the night. And, you know, we were uh, exploring that day. We got to, I got to go to the, so one of the ruins that was there in, in Tulum. Uh, you know, the, I think it's the, the descending God uh, uh, temple there in Tulum and overlooked the cliff, beautiful landscape. Um, but I was like, oh man, I got to get my, I got to flow there. You know, like I got to get my mason there, but we had to go through ticket tickets. We got to go through security check. <laughs> all this time, what? Right? what i can't even imagine uh, with a steel maze like how you explain that well, i have a steel maze right yeah <laughs> so i have the steel maze and uh i'm thinking of things to like you know do this you know because i mean I'm, i am mexican i'm part mexican my that's my uh the land of my father uh is is in mexico right so um the moment I set foot on that land in general, uh, there was just this electricity that just went up my, from the ground up and uh, very, very powerful uh, place in general. You know, I felt like, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're tuned in and you're, you're there, like, it, it's just like, things just happen. Like she wants something, it, it like it just like appears almost, you know. And, uh, so anyway, I was there, and man, I really love to get some some video of me flowing right in front of this temple. Uh, it's Mayan temple, and uh, so I'm thinking of ways I could do because the way I was carrying it, because typically the way you're going to carry it is a position called back rack. You know, this is this is usually like if you're walking. A distance usually you'll probably carry like this um at least that's the way i carry it right so uh this is too obvious you know they're not going to want someone to bring in because i mean it can be a weapon still right it is definitely very much that uh mm -hmm. has that capability of battering something right so they don't want anyone bringing like that something like that around rocks that are <laughs> from ancient Mayan civilization, right? So, <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking, I was like, I mean, what would I do? So we, I remember when we were in line for the tickets. I'm sitting here, like, you know, the Mister the Peanut guy, you know, the Peanuts, like, has that top hat, and he's just like this. Oh yeah, you know, uh, Mister Peanut, right? Uh, yeah. I was I was just using it as a walking stick. I was using it as a walking stick, pretending it was a walking stick, get buying the ticket. And when I went through the uh security at the time it was what 2021. Yeah, it was 2021. Uh summer 2021. And he was just looking at everyone's mask, make sure everyone had a mask on. 
So I uh, kept it in uh, what we call back body bottom. Uh, he was over here. He didn't see. He was just looking at my mask, but he didn't actually see the mace. So I was able to get it in to the to the grounds and to be able to just to be able to flow there. And, and that was that was really the trip where I opened up into a real flow with the mace. Uh, you know that that uh, up until that point, I was doing a lot of reps and working on my technique. Things a tennis coach would do, right? <laughs> Just you know, really focus on the on the fundamentals. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, uh, that trip, man, really that that moment, I just started like had some stuff prepared, and and then that was, but that was the first time I really just opened up into not like moves that weren't planned, that weren't pre-planned, you know, non-choreographed moves. And to be able to do it on that land, I'm thinking like, man, if there's, if there's, you know, I'm supposedly I have Aztec, you know, uh, in me, right. Which is also like, uh, uh, came through, uh, Mayan blood as well. Right. So it's like, how many generations has it been <laughs> where I was, uh, where the last in my line danced here? Or had any sort of celebration here, right? Or moved ecstatically at all here, right? Like mm -hmm. those were like ritual days where they were doing that, right? And so yeah. I'm on these grounds and and I'm feeling this energy and you know the the wind is kicking up and it's just it's, it's so it's moving through me, uh, you know that that's gonna be always one of the probably top three favorite things I've ever done in my life, you know, like that's it was, pretty cool. It was, so powerful. So, but oddly enough, that night we went back uh, to that space, and uh, my coach went to bed, and me and my buddy stayed up. And uh, there was a cenote tub because all their water comes from cenotes uh, in Tulum, and it was also the night of the pink blood moon, full moon, uh, in May twenty twenty one. So the moon was gorgeous, dude. It was <laughs> insane. It was it was gorgeous that night. Everything looked like a canvas. Uh, you know, clouds scattered in the sky, and that's a man. That's a that's a second time. You know, it was it was like one in the morning. Had some drinks, things like that. Like, but that was like that was probably the second time I really just like no plan. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do the stuff that I know. And under that moon, under those, you know, being uh, on that land, and that that was that was one of the most that was one of the most spiritual moments of my life, uh, but the most impactful for sure. Uh, you know, I really started focusing on you know, my ancestors, and uh, and that's how that's how this started, right? This happened. This started with me honoring my mother. Right. So when we're going through, uh, I think any sort of spiritual practice, I mean, I think, I think the West has lost that, to be honest with you. Uh, one of the things they've lost is honoring the ancestors, right? Here in the States, mm -hmm. we don't really have a, a practice like that, right? Where, where, you know, there's a lot of civil, like civilizations where they're so revered, uh, and honored at some point, right? Like Day of the Dead in Mexico, for instance, right? Where they're, yeah. they're have all the pictures and they have all the uh they really they really the, the practice is of is to honor that day uh, and honor honor them you know and to be able to do that uh in my own way using a steel mace uh you know that that day was yeah that day that day was super powerful um and uh yeah i'll never forget that day for sure that's amazing Wow. You know, it's just as you were talking and I was just kind of feeling into like all the thoughts and energies that I feel connected to the to the steel mace, you know, especially when you were talking about like, um, you know, like the Hindu God. I can't remember the name, you know, like that it's connected Hanuman. to 
Yeah, it's like connected to, well, one, you said two different things in regards to this. You used the word tool and you used the word weapon. Now, it's interesting because it's like, you know, we often think, ah, oh, weapon, blah, blah, blah. Things are tools, right? And it's all on like how you use them. And when you brought in, uh, you know, like more of a royal type type of energy, because, you know, the God is connected to, you know, something majestic, right? I started to think about two different things. I started thinking about like Archangel Michael and his sword and like the warrior, but like he's a holy warrior, right? And it's a tool and it's a sword of truth. Um, and then the other aspect was, because when you started talking about the armor of God, that kind of came through. But then I started mm. thinking about, you know, like the whole King Arthur or anything really having to do with like Lord of the Rings. You think about um, uh, what is his name? Aragon? 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aragon. Yeah. God, I haven't right watched there. him for years. <laughs> the King of Gondor. Yes, <laughs> the King of Gondor, yeah. and you, how humble of a man he was. But when he picked up his sword, um, it was with honor that he did so, yeah. and yeah. it wasn't to. Like, if you were to, you know, like, use it as a tool, um, but it may have killed someone, it was with purpose, but it was with honor that he was bringing to his kingdom, because there was something that was unjust in front of him, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, and when we talk about like Aries energy, um, there's so many different energies connected with Aries. And then you look at like what the integration is between Aries and Libra, because naturally the two are always talking to each other. You have the Aries that wants to take the inspired action, but it also needs the strategy and to be able to use thought in the process. And like when we think about um, war and the art of war, which I've mentioned to you, <laughs> there were rules to yeah. war. There still is. We just tend to think like we I don't know. I feel like this day and age, we don't understand what war is and how it was and what how sacred it actually was. Because there was an art form to it and it was mm -hmm. almost poetic, you know? Mm -hmm. And there, there was like honor in it. And you had to have strategy. There was different ways to go about things to obtain your mission. And there was the mission involved. And it's 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 very interesting, like like to 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 really tap into those energies. And I liked also what you said in regards to how what's going on outside of you and what's going on inside of you and meeting the two. I would love for you to talk more about that in regards to this art form. Yeah. I mean, man, you, when you brought up the art of war, um, one of my favorite lines is uh, in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. And, uh, you know, that's, is that not true about life also? Right. In in our day to day, things the the things we have going on you know things in, in that are very real in our lives you know for some people maybe their work some, for some people maybe their home they uh, really just uh, everyone's story is different right and, um it, it's being able to get in the space of aries was really interesting for me personally uh you know because mm -hmm uh within within the modality that i that i do still mace flow 
you're able to just go into that thought process and really like embody through movement uh and a weapon uh you know this 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 tool that you're that you're wielding you know and 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 there are certain flavors that come out of that uh for me it was it was a very powerful uh took a lot of very powerful stances you know there's there's moves called battle stance battle stance pops up a lot in there uh you know but also you know thinking about because i well i let me say i am a libra uh and uh my son's sign is libra so uh it's very uh it's it's it was very fitting for uh to be in that space of aries uh within me within myself right okay. uh so i was also able to you know really focus on the the innocence of the sign as well you know mm. and, and the the uh, the softness uh of it as well you know and uh it really is such a dynamic uh sign that that can put you in so many different aspects but also balance as well right and um I, and i also i always say with the mace that it's really fun when you think about the the yin, yin and the yang you know the yin movement yang movement you know yang is a little bit more uh there's a little more uh resistance to it right mm -hmm. there's there's a bit more uh more of a uh dynamic a dynamic movement associated with it uh but, but you know yin movement which is you know yoga is, is it can be very yin there's a lot of tai chi, tai chi can be very yin and uh, tai chi could also be very yang and uh you know, ask, ask in yoga as well, but you know, that you have that element with the yin of grounding and, you know, a little bit more static holds and uh, slower movement to emphasize uh, an emotion. Uh, you know, the, all of those things are present within uh, the steel mace flow uh, practice. So, um, but to be able to uh, utilize those energies of Aries, man, like, uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to explore. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm very excited to, to embody these energies through this modality. Um, I will say for me, uh, it's been kind of difficult to, um, work out my arms and chest areas and things like that. Um, I don't know, like I, I feel like the best way I did that actually was through this modality when you taught me like how to do this. And I'm like, Oh, interesting. And you do just, you can you just take it on the go. And I'm like, Oh, wow. So like, um, now that I have the link, I'm I'm actually yeah I'm gonna get one of those um so that I'm ready for, and prepared for the class. <laughs> I, had to, I had to think about that, but um, like I want I I I would like to actually implement this in my um at least once at least once a week, you know, like playing around with it because I feel like there's something about working out the the physical body but also tapping into like the inner world in that way um i just don't really vibe with going to the gym like like i'm more of like very action based like i would be like oh let's let's do an activity so that i can pretend like i i don't even know that i'm working out right now <laughs> yeah. go to the batting cages like give give me a task or some yeah. type of thing because my brain will be like going to the gym ah uh, no give me like uh i i will say there was a class once that kicked my butt you ever done a budokan yoga class I have not, but oddly enough, my uh, my still base flow coach, um, he he does he does those. I think he's part of a group and everything, uh, online community. But I think he's been doing a couple of retreats that are just strictly Buddha uh yoga. But I've heard I've heard 
I heard that's uh, intense. Oh my goodness. Like you literally act out animals in the class. You're constantly going from one um, stance to another um, in a very physical way. <laughs> yeah and yeah, i mean it's very I, primal <laughs> it was very primal and you know yeah. oh that's something also that i wanted to to share that i just noticed i had a a realization of i mean i guess here and there i've had it but it really just came full force the word war flipping it it's raw raw energies yeah wow and I'm okay. like, whoa. I mean, that's really that's really it. Working with the raw energies. And you think about like mm -hmm. Aries, Aries, um, you know, is the beginning of the zodiac cycle, like the different seasonal cycle. <laughs> and naturally, at the beginning beginning of anything, you get the raw. Yeah. You get the raw. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Love that. Love that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, it, 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 it's, what's more raw yeah. than like, than blood, right? Like, uh, which is, you know, that's, that's what, uh, isn't that like, that's, that's like the symbol for strength and, uh, and wisdom, which is very, um, my understanding of the Aries is uh, is is part of the archetype, you know, for it as well. You know, there's just there's just so many different energies and powers uh, present within uh, yeah. that Aries symbol um, or intention, right? Like, I mean, uh, many of the warriors from many warrior. I mean, to be a a, a warrior, a true warrior, like there is a certain amount of wisdom that comes with that. Right. Like there's there's a def, certainly a, a discipline. Right. I mean, the, the things that you experience through uh, being any sort of warrior, whether it's a physical warrior or that, you know, that spiritual warrior, uh, you know, usually is as is, is hard as difficult to bear. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. So yeah, I, I mean, speaking of that raw, right? Like what's coming to my mind is, you know, like it, like the rawest form of us physically, like is is our blood, right? Like it's it's uh yeah. it's really interesting. Man. And this is the see this is this sort of thing is what comes up when you're focusing on Aries and Steel Maze Flow, right? Like that's just like you're you're allowing a space of that that thought you know yeah uh, yeah and then that's that's uh that's what's really you know my my uh I, I think it's really important for coaches to also have their coaches uh as well right so my yeah. uh my coach uh jeffrey oaks um he's really his his whole thing is the attention and flow you know and i think those two two things come hand in hand right uh you know with but we want to have an intention for everything that we do right especially yeah. if we're trying to focus on building up our our bodies you know or or healing from uh an injury right uh you know that that's the intention right there that's the raw intention right there uh behind any sort of physical activity um you know so but uh, but when you dive into different intentions, archetypes, and uh, anything, man, I mean, because it it can be a, also be a great meditation. You know, you get lost. Any sort of flow, you're flowing at anything. People flow with cooking, right? Like, I mean, flow that 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 <laughs> transcend hypofrontality, which is what happens in the brain. It can happen at any time, right? Like, it happen you mm -hmm. at work where you just like. Or you're talking to someone like I, I found it, it, it initially started coming to me when I'm talking to people uh, at work or any, any sort of professional setting. And uh, as a coach, I remember I was just like I would run through uh, 
you know, explaining a drill to my students and uh, having left it and just not remembered like what happened. It was just like a blur, right? It was like you black out yeah. almost, but you're killing it. You know, like everything, like you knew, you knew you left it being like a good, uh, a good breakdown or a good uh, entertaining thing. You know, uh, a lot yeah. of actors, musicians, they can't, they play a guitar solo if they're improv you know, they may not be able to play that as exact notes for you uh, back again, right? Like you have all those, especially in the 70s, you had all these guitarists who never played the same solo. You know, they were just, you know, doing their thing uh, all the time, right? 20 yeah. minute drum solos. Uh, so th those are all very unique. Right. And, uh, you know, you're writing a song, right? There's intention there. Uh, yeah. Songwriting has low aspects to it, too. You know, anyone who does any sort of poetry uh, also can experience flow, right? It happens yeah. so much. And to be able to do it through uh, movement and resistance training, you know, the yin and the yang, uh, it really, really helps, has helped me uh, get back on track and feel good in my body, uh, feel bold you know, to, you know, I want to, I want to be able to do all the stuff, man, as long as I can, as long as I'm here. Uh, I think, I think that's a beautiful intention too, you know, uh, I think most people have that intention, uh, but, and the Sanskrit saying, uh, tat, tat si. you know, I am that too. Uh, you know, sometimes we lose our way and sometimes we uh, get off of something that uh, we knew was helping, right? Or making us feel good, you know, for different reasons, you know, yeah. uh, and that's fine. Uh, you know, have total compassion with yourself about that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, being able to uh, to get back there, that's all part of the journey, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all part of the journey. We we have some some step back. Uh, uh, we feel like we're taking a step back in life, and really what we're doing is we're taking a step back to move to the side to go in another direction, <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah. so, you know, that's the... Sometimes we don't know. But it, it always seems to work out, too. Right, it always seems to work yeah. out. Uh, uh, it works itself out in a lot of ways. Um, so I like to be able to, uh, to alchemize, al uh, alch alchemize a lot of that that stuff uh, with this tool. Um, and oftentimes it is that man, something I'm wrestling with inside, you know, or you know, I'm really pissed off for whatever reason uh go move it out you know sometimes it's like a little five minute thing i can just grab it real quick and do something within the means of you know my body how warmed up it is or not you know because the most important part of it is the functionality right yeah. um just like that warrior you know going out in a battle you know if they're if their bodies are cold uh they're not going to be moving as well but if they're if they're nice and warmed up and they're their bodies are limber, they're ready to go. That's going to make them better on the battlefield, right? Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I believe any sort of practice uh, where where you can find that state of grace, uh, I think I think that's whatever it is, uh, you know, keep it in your life uh, as much as you can. Uh, yeah. I just had a, I just had my my second child uh, five weeks ago. Puzzle toad. Yep. Wow, 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 wow. But she, uh, so you know, with the that territory, you know, you're in the hospital and you're doing all this stuff. And, you know, life is just like completely changes. You know, still finding that time to do. Uh, your personal practice may seem challenging. Uh, you're moving away somewhere. You know, you could get off your rhythm. And if you're anything like me, uh, you know, sometimes uh, any sort of little change 
uh, can offset that rhythm, right? Mm. Uh, if you're, especially if you're trying to build it into a habit, uh, right. you know, on the road to your 10,000 hours, right? Uh, so, you know, that, that part, uh, I love how mm. the still base is just so accessible. I don't need to get my car. I don't need to go drive somewhere, you know, uh, literally anything I need to do is right here in this, in this stick. <laughs> um, so, but it, it accompanies a lot of great things, you know, it accompanies martial arts really well. Uh, it accompanies, um, uh, 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 yoga very well. It accompanies conventional work at workouts very well. Also, you know, it, it is a mobility yeah. tool. So, uh, you know, that's what's, that's what's so fun about it. Part of what's so fun about it. I love that. So I want to, um, <clears throat> I love something that you said, and I want to like kind of bring that full circle for us, for anyone yeah. who um, is just coming on to this podcast and never heard of the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series. I'm going to kind of reinforce what we're doing here and why is all this happening, right? So like you mentioned like every you know, coach should have their own coach, right? So like the step right before this, you know, is Capricorn, which we actually are going to have like a a business coaching session right before this. I want to bring this full circle and start at the, at the zero. So like we start off this entire series with setting an intention. And part of that is harnessing our sacred space, realizing that there is a difference between the chaos, you know, and the sacred space. We have to have that boundary. And when we put that intention in there, we're essentially um, carving that out and also taking some type of action steps to actually have that sacred space for ourselves, whether that's time or an actual space. Uh, whatever our intention is and then connecting higher you know going above ourselves connecting to the 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 source of all creation and when we do that we we start to flow that divine energy through us and allow for that creative spark to come out of us which is you know again like we went from that that sacred space scorpio energy into the leo and shining shining that heart getting the creative being involved and then we drop it down into the soul which is finding you know like the rhythm the the vibration the feeling which is cancer and when we put that in perspective with our intention like essentially we're getting lit up about whatever it is and and like we feel it and we want to do something with it we want to create a habit a ritual some type of thing and then like you know throughout that process sometimes we're like oh man you know i messed up like i didn't i didn't do day two or you know like i get down and and it's like that comes in with the belief system like all right, what, do we need to ch change something with our belief system? Like, let's radiate that even higher. And to where anything we need to change with that, then we can expand. And that's Sagittarius. And then we, like, shake that up, right? Like, sometimes, like, we have to... Aquarius is such an interesting thing. It's like, we can do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and if it's not the right like sequence, then we're just going to create this insanity, right? So if it's something that we need to actually shift or change, then we allow for new outcomes to happen. And so that really comes with like the previous step, that mindset. You know, changing our belief system. And once we've done that and we've made that 
slight change to be able to get on the right frequency, we can even maybe even share that with someone else in a group and have some accountability. And then we all are like being lift up, lifted up. And as we do that, you know, we, we also get to Gemini, which is the communication aspect that we've just changed a lot about our own patterns and things like that. And now we're fully ready to communicate what we want with the universe. And it's clear. It's crystal clear at this point. We've got the mindset involve everything, right? The heart, the soul. And then we harmonize it. We balance it out. Because I don't know about you, but Scorpio likes to go all or nothing. And sometimes it's like you kind of have to like alchemize that a little bit to see like, how can I do this in a, a flowed way? Which also is like, can I allow myself to receive? Which is that balance point in regards to Aries, right? So then um, we get through like this energy of, of like allowing ourselves to receive and we go into Pisces and we go even more beyond into the ether, the spirituality of it. And we clear out any energetic junk that no longer serves us. And that also comes with faith. That also comes in understandings. And it also comes with compassion. Compassion for ourself, others, and the process itself. And then we get to Capricorn where we've done a lot of work. And now it's, it's decision time what's right for us and when we do identify what is right for us we make a commitment and we've now started to lay the the building blocks the foundation for the path ahead of us and that right there you know like we're doing like a, a be the ceo ceo of our own life kind of energy that comes with the coaches in our life you know it comes with, we've had to identify that we, we needed to change and shift some things, but then we really start to, to go in on it and do the hard, hard work. The goat is like, you know, like really into doing those things and it completely, I don't know, you ever see a goat climb a mountain? It doesn't even realize it's freaking doing it. It gets into the like, it starts yeah, getting into that flow state. That's wild. Yeah. And I mean, it's wild. That's wild. That's, that's, <laughs> that's evolution at its finest, man. That's just like, that's generations and generations and generations of figuring that shit out. Cause that shit is like, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, man. They're, they're, those are insane. I love that. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, by the time we've like really, we, we've kind of in Capricorn laid out some type of a strategy, you know, because we talked about it. And that's when that strategy gets put into place with Aries. And now we're like, all right, let's do it. Like, and you're that, like you said, that flow state. And then mm -hmm. from there, that birthing process comes out with Taurus. You start to see things because you're doing it. You're taking action. And it's not like the action, uh, you know, that it's like um, you force things. I mean, you can do that and it doesn't work out always, you know, but it's like getting to that harmonious state of what you're talking about with that flow, you know, like things like I like what you said when you were in Mexico, right? Things just naturally came to you. You were in that flow state. You were connecting with your ancestors. You've like gotten to that point and the universe is on your side. Like you're in a harmonious play. And then we reach that state as we've birthed this, we reach that state of like Virgo energy, which is embodiment because we're doing it over and over and over again. You know, 
And so it's like, it's re- I'm really excited to really harness this energy of what inspired action is and all the different aspects of what goes into the Aries energy. And we can do that literally through the steel mace flow. And so what I want to ask you is, um, so our audience uh, knows, what are we doing in that class? What do they need? So, uh, yeah, so a typical class is going to be combined uh, with you know, just getting mobile, you know, even moving without a mace at first. You know, just, uh, you know, I like to touch on on a lot of different parts of the body that we tend to neglect, quite frankly. And, uh, um, you know, one of those is is our hips, right? Like, I mean, our our, our hips are doing a lot of work every, every single day. Right. And, um, and, to, and, and I think I find that vital, you know, you don't, you, you don't quite know what you have until you lose it. Right. Uh, that old, that old ex- expression, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I have a lot of friends in the tennis world, you know, it's, 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 it's really tennis, tennis can be very rough on the body. You know, there's all those different cuts that you're making, uh, quick agile cuts and very limited amount of time to do it. You know, that's a, you know, there's a lot of people with that uh have both injured their 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 hips or uh in some way shape or form but there's also people that will play to build up their hips you know to make sure they're working it out you find a lot of people with hip replacements uh you know going back and playing tennis because it, it is also can be also very good for for that as far as just moving like a full body experience um uh, and you know steel mace is is part of that you know but with steel mace it's not through competition necessarily uh, uh with another person uh it's not uh, you know you're not necessarily reacting to something external right like uh all you're doing is you're sitting with yourself moving with yourself uh you're uh it's very internal you know so um so so we go through those those uh, the warm up and then we go through a series of uh building a flow so there's there's going to be a core a uh, flow that was written and choreographed and uh the flow uh there's a lot of intention put into uh this this flow actually uh uh Catriel uh, was there during the birth of of uh, the beginnings of this. Film. I will say it has changed a bit, uh, Catriel, from even when you saw it. But uh, it's it's uh, you're you're there in the genesis, you know. So it has your energy in it too. Uh, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so, uh, but we're gonna do a s- series of fragmented movements. Uh, with a petition, uh, you know, that will create a foundation ultimately for, for everybody. So, uh, you know, so we'll go through what we call flow foundations, uh, go through the moves. And then towards the end of the session, we'll know all the moves and we'll put all the moves together into one sequence to flow. Uh, and we'll be able to move together uh, with this intention that the, that the flow was embodied from and, uh where it is today you know and uh you know what isn't that isn't isn't that the same with us as people right like we uh we had some sort of a genesis whether it's you know an era of your of your life you know uh, those new beginnings or uh you know you you contemplate different stories from 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 the past uh you know, you think about those, but all of those things create who you are right now. So, uh, this will be, uh, you know, that this is, this is part of the intention that it's going to be put into, uh, the, the steel based flow class. I love that. So, um, we need, I'll, I'll put the link in there for the steel mace so that if you feel so inclined to get one, that's, the tool for the class and if 
for some reason they can't they can use yeah yeah so if uh if you don't you, you got you have any sort of a stick to be honest with you if it's an offset uh like a weight, broom you know a broom would be uh a pretty decent thing you know you're not gonna obviously have as much resistance uh but you know i would i would suggest uh, uh if you're able to purchase a mace uh do so either a seven pound or a ten pound uh i think that'll be uh proper um you know it, again i mean just like what i almost did you know like i almost went with that oh, i'm gonna go heavy and uh you know for a guy like like me i'm uh you know uh it, it, it was plenty it was, 10 pound was plenty uh so uh but it's also a great tool to have you know they're only uh, i think they're they're like certain companies will have you know in, in the in the mid to high 40s uh as far as as far as uh money is concerned so it's uh it, it's great because it's there you know you can always you can pick it up for five minutes when you're waiting for your food to heat in the oven you know, like a, uh, all the way up to traveling with it to the mountains somewhere, being able to flow in a mountain. Uh, you know, uh, you know the the journey is uh, uh, the journey. These things have taken me on also have been has been uh, physically like in the world uh, has been great. You know, it's it's been great to connect with the community. You know, there's a whole community that's dedicated to uh, mace art. You know, so uh, yeah. I'm really excited to be able to share it uh, with you all in this space uh, that has been created from, you know, from uh, the things that uh, that you're so passionate about. You know, you're going through all of them. You're going through all the signs. I was like, ah, I love it. He does this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, this is like pure bliss for me, like. Ooh, we get to play with every single energy. And for me, yeah. I get to do it yeah. like twice because I have the in-person class and the online. Yep. 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 So Absolutely. um also uh uh we have the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series journal, which can be purchased on um Amazon for $22. And of course, you know, if for some reason you can't get this. Um, you know, you can bring your own journal, but I worked really, really hard on this journal that literally has questions catered to every single class, both in person and online. And so, um, they're really good reflection questions, um, that as we're going through, you know, this, honestly, it's a kind of a fast paced, uh, series even though it's going through three months you know you only have a week for each sign and you know uh, being able to reflect on um on everything that's why we're going to repeat this series at the second half of the year and we're all really going to need that because i know i will and i'm going to be writing a bunch of things down of like oh wait gotta have that now and like because when we put something down on paper, it starts to, you know, it starts to click in, you know, and also we get to see it later and we're like, oh my gosh, I've grown so much or I wanted to, I want to do that still, you know, like, like whatever you put down. I mean, I look at my journals and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's insane to see one, how much I've accomplished and two things that I still have yet to do that I still want to implement, you know? So it's really good to track your, your journey. And, um, our class is in a couple weeks. It is on, let's see here, March, Wednesday, March 27th, um, from seven to eight thirty PM. It is $25. And, um, it's, you know, if for some reason there's a time thing going on, oh, Eastern standard time guys. <laughs> and, you know, if for some reason you ain't, you ain't, you aren't able to, um, you know, appear on person, um, it is recorded. Uh, but we would love 
to have you here with us because that's just more fun, I feel. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you'd like to share in regards to the class? Uh, no, I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, again, this is, a become a passion of mine to share this with more people in this area. Uh, cause you know, selfishly, I, I would love to, uh, uh, you know, this, this, this art grew so much online, you know, you got this whole online community, uh, that you're talking to because most of the classes all going through online and, you know, there, but there is a, there is a beautiful back to being able to flow together. Uh, you know, whether it's an online space, but definitely in a, in a personal space. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been, I've been giving classes for almost two years now in my, in my area, I live in Sarasota, you know, and expanding a bit to St. Pete as well. I give classes, uh, the roots to crown in St. Petersburg. Um, uh, and what but, days are those? Saturdays, Saturdays at eleven. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right now, right now it's at a bi bi weekly time, but uh, that's most likely going to be expanding to to weekly. So, uh, you know, give them give me a follow. Uh, uh, my Instagram handles uh, uh, magi underscore movement uh, on Instagram, and um. Uh, you know that that's that space is completely dedicated to my still base flow journey and uh you know different events that i have going on uh there as well so uh, but to be able to share this online through this lens uh is going to be very unique and this whole series is extremely unique uh and it allows uh, any practitioner uh you know to be able to embody uh the sign, you know, and, and to be able to, to work out, work it out through the different Zodiacs, uh, you know, the, the different events that I've been a part of thus far have been, uh, very mind opening, uh, mm. you know, definitely give, give me a lot of, to think about, you know, and I think most people who can consider themselves seekers can relate to that, you know, mm. uh, you know, to be able to, um, you know, to, to find, to find meaning you know, in, in, in these different spaces. And thank you so much for supplying that and uh, creating a, a space to be for, for anyone who is going to be joining any class uh, to, to, uh, uh, to focus on. I love that. Thank you. Um, I, I'm just so honored to have you here. I thank you so much for being a part of this series. And um, and uh, you can find all of um information about Julio, like you like everything he said, plus on my website at energyspeaksbycotriel dot com, online series, um under the classes tab, and um it has all of his information where the practitioners are, um and and also you can find this event, um or. You can find this event under the events part of the website, but it will also be on here. If you enjoyed this podcast, um, uh, Energy Speaks podcast, I please share it with someone. You know, there's some ancient wisdom in here, and um, it it's great to grow community. So I love you all, divine, beautiful souls, and that is today's episode with Aries. <laughs> Let's go take some inspired Ooh. action <laughs> <laughs> and join us for the class. <laughs>